Hello. So in the previous video, I decided to try to tear into these uh, rails. Um, I had some issues with one of the bearings. That was part of what the impetus was to starting this entire thing. Um, I did find a lot of metal shavings in uh, the runoff. So this bearing's pretty smooth. This bearing um, is really smooth. Let's see if I can get it on without losing any of the balls. The third bearing, on the other hand, was not smooth. Um, so now, yeah, this one like feels really smooth in comparison. This one feels smooth, but with some resistance, just a little. So I tore this one down again. Um, and what I did, um, I did this off camera last night. I was just uh, messing around a little bit. But I put a tiny little chamfer um, on the edge, where you can kind of see that shiny spot on the second camera view right now, the right camera view. Um, what I was trying to accomplish was to uh, to get, there was a little bit of a, a step or a hesitation, I don't know what you want to call it, a lip, where I was thinking the balls might be running across it and not having oh, good luck, essentially. Uh, they, they just get a little bit of a sticky situation there. It's a theory I'm running with, at least. Um, so then I just uh, cleaned it off of WD-40, uh, wiped it down, and I recorded it with tef the Teflon uh, lubricant. Here, uh, the tri flow. So, uh, Alex, the fellow that I was watching the original video for, put out a second video where he specifically did use Super Lube. Um, and in that video, he actually recommends using the, the Super Lube a lot more liberally. The lube that he was using, I guess, wasn't quite as thin as, as the Super Lube. And therefore, he didn't want to put it on very heavily. So, what I'll be doing is packing the bearing a little bit better with uh, lubrication. And that silicone, it really does need to dry. I mean, this block feels way more slippery with that Teflon coating. There's still a little bit of residue on it that, that, that can wipe off, but... I feel like we're more than dry enough at this point. So, without too much further ado here, let's uh, bring our bearings in. So, what I was doing essentially is I have the block here, um, and I was putting on the end cap. Here we go. In, in that little corner, uh, right, right here, uh, there's a fair amount of a step. Um, I haven't, I wasn't able to get my tool. The drum. I ended up using the Dremel because the file just wasn't cutting it. Um, I think. I need to figure out a way to grind down the disc so I can get it into the area a little bit better. Um, I wasn't able to get it fully in to that area as much as I would have preferred. Um, so I was only able to get the very edge, but I think it is smoother. So I'm going to 
try putting some super lube in here and wish I had some sort of applicator, but maybe I can just kind of group it under this Allen wrench here and slide it in to the, to the pocket. That's probably way more than I should have put in there, but I'll just get it in. Try to run out the extra. So should be good. Put a little bit in here. around and some more. One of the benefit to uh, getting the lubrication all over these balls is they're a lot easier to handle than uh, the dry balls were. I mean, now they actually stick to my finger. So, I'm hoping I won't be packing it too tight, but we'll get it loosened up one way or the other before the video's over. Just trying to gently roll them out of the pile of lube there so they just have a coating on them but they're not uh, gooped with it. Attempt to stay better on camera here. So, hopefully, when this is all said and done, I have a bearing that at least rides somewhat smooth. It doesn't have to be perfect, but it was kind of exceptionally not good before. So, my method is let's just dump a whole bunch of balls in here and then kind of push them into place. Seemed to work pretty good before. And with the lubrication on here, it's much easier to just kind of dump on here. into the races. Magnetic tools. I'm not sure how all these things pick up magnetism sometimes.
tell you what, using a tool that's magnetized with these balls, even when there's grease on them, is kind of annoying. It really looks like there should be room for one more ball. Try it. Put a little retainer clip in here. this in here, the balls, there's definitely one too many balls. too deeply with the cutting disc. After I use the uh, cutting disc to kind of strip away the material on the edges ever so slightly, I um, used kind of a polishing disc to kind of take the burrs off um, of where I was using the disc. I think it worked, more or less. I fear that there might be too much grease here. definitely seems to take the challenge out of putting bearings in here. They all just kind of chill in the block after you're done. little to no lubrication in this block before I started. And it seems 
difficult to push the balls around the noose. track or whatever you want to call it. The balls are circulating, that's for sure. seem to want to stay down. difficult to find the perfect uh, Phillips head for this.
super lube is actually kind of leaking out here. Well, as this thing travels back and forth, it does seem to get a little better. Red end caps actually seem to be engaging the rail quite a bit. I don't feel any movement of the uh, bearing on the rail, which is nice. Now for the screw home. This one glides so smoothly. This one glides pretty smoothly. Like this one, don't even have to touch the rail. This one. Um, oh, thank you. Hello. Hey, Brian. How's it going? How are you doing? 
Oh, not too bad. Yeah? Did you get to come home at a reasonable hour? Yeah, today wasn't so bad. Like, basically the previous few days were kind of preparing for today, so. Okay. Uh, we had a whole bunch of people from Ford into our shop today. Oh, okay. So, uh, let me catch you up real quick, if you're watching the live stream. I am getting ready to copy the link and put it into Safari on the iPad, because um, that way I can um, mute it. Gotcha. So if you're if you're running it um if you're running a live stream in the app it um you, you can't control the volume. Did you stab yourself again? No, just cracked fingers. Oh, okay. I was afraid you would stab yourself again. Uh, I get stuff like that just from living. <laughs> yeah, I've got a, a friend of mine who deals with eczema really badly and he's a mechanic so it's like he's constantly messing his hands up yeah so so are you doing the did you do the cleaning and now you're doing the lubrication um i kind of somewhat finished this already and then i messed around with it again so uh, so uh after the first cleaning um i did find tons of little metal shavings uh, in the bottom of the dish. Oh, really? Yeah, so there's definitely, um, we're not properly cleaned. Got um, it. Well, it's good that we, good that you're doing that. Yeah. Um, so one bearing in particular I had issues with before I started, it was the whole reason I mm -hmm. got into it. So, at the end, what I've kind of ended up with, I've got this first one, which is pretty smooth, and I don't have to touch the rail at all. You know, the, it just glides nice and, and freely. Okay. Next one over, as you can see, the rail moves and not the bearing. But if I hold it, it's still a pretty smooth travel. It's just got a lot more grab. I'm thinking it has to do with these red caps and some Okay, now I'm watching probably the wrong live stream then. Hold on. Oh, there we go. I I was a couple of minutes behind. Gotcha. So now I can see it's but so the caps are, are are causing problems? I'm thinking the caps are grabbing a hold of um, like this one, as as the cat well, as it comes down, uh, uh, I mean it doesn't really grab at all at the rail. Um, and I think it's the idea is it's supposed to be like squeegeeing out any kind of debris that's on the rail, so it doesn't get into the bearing. And it looks well, like it does do that. Like it's not completely not making contact. It's just Nice and yeah, maybe a wiper. Yeah, it's essentially what I believe this, like the red block essential or red piece, just essentially wipes the rail as it's going. And I feel like the wipers on the um, see this the other one? ones. Yeah, so on the second rail, one wiper seems fine. They even got a channel to collect all the like grease. As as it goes down the rail. Okay. Is it on backwards? I don't think so. That's the way it was on when I received it, at least. So. I mean, but, it doesn't mean it's on backwards. Right, but there are little indents in the back that kind of match up with indents on the green block. Well, there so, you go. But I. So the green block. The green block is the retainer is the bearing retainer. The red block is the is the wiper. 
Right, yeah, the green block has the pieces that, like, recirculate the balls back into the, uh, you know, into the, uh... Into the carriage block? Yes, thank you. Okay. Sorry, I'm eating dinner. For, I'm finally eating dinner now. Oh, no worries. You back home? I am. I got home. I got home a little while ago, but it's the running around trying to get the last, the, all the stuff that didn't get done over the last couple of days. Yeah, I understand um, that. And then, um, then went and picked Corbin up at work and ended up getting, you know, getting into repairing a set of drawer slides. It's just crazy. Like each, all three of these have different levels of pressure it takes to move the bearing. Oh man! And uh, I'm not really sure what I can do. Like they're all at least moving smoothly now. Like uh, the this bearing was moving in fits and jerks. Yeah. Are they moving reasonably smoothly though? If you if you move slowly, do you feel catching? No, I mean, I do feel a tiny bit of the balls recirculating a little bit, but mm -hmm. nothing like it used to. Um, and I can see the ball circulating in the track. You know, that they're doing well. Okay. So, uh, I think my dremeling the edges, putting a tiny little chamfer on the block, really is what did did it for this block um really okay was there so there was a problem with the block and you ended up doing a little bit of light machining on it yeah essentially um the uh I, pu I put the green piece on and tried to take like um and run you know the tip of uh, my pointing tool here and uh -huh. try to see how much it caught the transition between um, the retainer and the block itself. Right. And there was a little bit of a step on um, uh. all four sides. So I took and uh, as carefully as I could, put just the tiniest little bit of chamfer on the edges there. And now it doesn't catch. Yeah. So I, I'm not feeling it catching anymore, but... but now, then I watched another video from Alex. Uh, he had, like, a follow-up video where he actually uses Super Lube, which is what I have. Um, yep. And uh, he actually said, oh, this stuff, you know, it, it... Like, with the stuff he was having, he barely put any on. Like, you know, he yeah. was, like, very lightly putting it on. The Super Lube, he recommended putting it on a little bit heavier, so... That might be part of what's going on with the block now is that it's moving smoother. I I packed it with a bit more lubrication. A little more grease? Yeah, like I tried to grease the uh, channels that the uh, balls run through. Okay. And uh, then I also put a light coating on the ball. Like you can see the kind of the reflection probably on the plate. And then yeah, a little, I, bit of, a little bit on that. Yeah, and I rolled the balls through there. The nice advantage of putting a little bit of uh, lube on the balls is that they stick now instead yes. of just fall off. So you can you can use the grease to pack them in a little bit. So I I, I made the decision to go ahead and order the um, aluminum upgrade. Um, uh, which upgrade? For, for the crossbar. Oh, okay. And the reason is I I just don't really feel comfortable with how the carriage is moving or the it, it's just really tight up there. Um, All right. And I'm wondering, especially with that one that I had to repress, if the uh, if there's flex in those posts and it's basically right. causing friction on the. Because um, we're having issues with that with that insert. Exactly, and I'm wondering. I, I that's one of the one I mentioned in the forum. I don't know if you've seen it or not, but 
I mentioned that I, I wanted to try something when Luke mentioned that he could get the bearing blocks all four corners out of aluminum. I was thinking if we replace all of them in, um, and we have nice taps, straight holes, I was wondering how much friction would be taken away from the belt. Um, yeah, I mean, if they're if the if if you got tapped holes and they're good, mm-hmm. you know, they're the right size and everything, and they're square with the surface. Yeah. Yeah. So basically, I think what I'm going to do is tear apart the core X Y now that I've got it finished, of course, and mm-hmm. uh, um, start cleaning the rails in preparation for the. Uh, uh, that upgrade. So, I mean, it's kind of a two for one, I guess. So, like, I, I kind of wanted to clean the rails, but I didn't want to tear them apart just to tear them apart. Right. And so I'm like, well, you know what? Yeah, Luke didn't say he's got, he says he's trying to get, you know, yeah. quantity. Right. And, and Doug Roseworth may be making them as well. I just don't know if he's got a price on them yet. Yeah, so here's the story about that. Um, Luke, I'd asked asked Josh about it, and, of course, he said he's still working on a source. Um, And then Luke chimed in that he had that, oh, I I can get them made for $40. Well, he can't actually get them made for $40. He can get them made for $40 plus $200 setup fee. Ah, so um so if you make like one set, you know, then you're spending two hundred and sixty dollars or two hundred and forty dollars and so on and so forth. So that's why we're saying like ten people, then you would have it and split the cost among ten people, it ended up being an extra twenty bucks, so sixty bucks per set. Yeah. And so what was Luke's source? Uh, I'm not sure what the source is, but then he was saying, like, well, if we get enough people, I'll just buy a mill and make it myself. <laughs> At which point, we just see what Mandela what Mandela wants to do with them. Well, then Mandela chimed in saying that they were looking into um, making them after they get done with the crossbar. So, yeah. um, as much as I, I like Luke and want to support his shop, I feel like... Uh, He's got to go through the entire learning curve before he can actually start producing aluminum parts. Oh yeah, no, I would I would much rather go with an established manufacturer. Yeah. Mister, okay, buddy. I know uh, we kind of came out of nowhere. So anyway, what the yeah. heck? What's up? The UV extension to his Core X Y. I'm not really sure I understand what it is. UB, is that? No, this is over in the demo reel. I was going to say, are they uh, trying to do uh, IDEX Core XY or something? Well, hard to say. Um, so, yeah, I think um, and apparently I saw some some commentary on my, my mount. Um So it says, oh, well, I can't, it, it, it doesn't clear the core XY, and it's like, cancel. Levi, get down. Oh, that was Levi who triggered Siri. Never mind. Um, uh, apparently, Custom Tools has got really busy after I went. So H2B mentioned that um, the X limit switch is clipped with my mount, but you don't zero with, hey, Levi, get down. You don't zero with the tool head, with a tool install. Mm-hmm. So I think that's where the, that's where the, the issue is. Yeah, I figure I'll tear tear the rails off, 
Um, mm. It's a shame. I really do like the look of the carbon fiber bar. But I don't know. I feel like before I get too crazy with this thing, I really need to figure out why this isn't moving well. <clears throat> but, uh, yeah, so I figure I'll uh, tear out the rails and then I can still start on the Z axis until everything comes. So I don't have to stop. Okay. Um, I just won't tighten down these bolts that are going to hold the Z-axis or the upper part of the Z-axis on. And that way I should be able to... Uh, and this stepper just does not want to move at all. For some reason. Like the screws are loose. So, you just got the ship notification. The ship notification for what? For the uh, my Duet three. Oh nice. Uh, and um, and I just there it is. Okay. Too many apps running. Not enough. Not enough stuff. Um. And the four uh, the four tool boards. Very nice. And my volcano just arrived too. I still really like the idea of Luke's boards, and theoretically, his boards should be in. Um, I think this week or something like that, or maybe early next week. I thought ballpark. he was having I thought he was having delivery troubles because of the stuff going on in China. And I know I am. I messaged him about it about two or three days ago. Let me let me find it. it I all still like the carbon fiber anymore. bar is nice. What's that? I think I still I still like the carbon fiber. But apparently, you know, if we could just figure out a better way for those inserts. But yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you don't you don't home you don't you don't home your XY or home your machine with the tool installed. Right. Use an empty carriage. Did you see that uh that spider cat that I sent you? Spider cat? Silly silly video. Somebody uh, was using a laser pointer and running up the wall and the cat was climbing the wall to get to it. Oh, yeah, it was a it was a faux brick it was a brick wall. Yeah, yeah. You've seen it, right? I've seen at least a video just like it, if not it. Yeah. So it says that um, he sent me a message at on the nineteenth or eighteenth that the order was awaiting pickup, and that he chose two to four day shipping. Oh, okay. And so he was hoping to receive them today. Um, you know, so I mean, but I mean, even if they come next week, that's still. Um, oh yeah. Oh my God, I'm an idiot. I'm like, why won't this thing go? It's because there's a freaking set screw in there, you moron. Of course, it's not going to move. <laughs> wow. Okay. Yeah, I completely forgot. Trying to remove the tension off the belt. Oh, yeah, there's a set screw on it. Uh-huh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you back it off. You don't even... The thing is, I almost think you would... I, I keep... Con, I'm trying to convince myself that shoulder screws... Shoulder screws on the uh, on the motor mounts for the... Uh, you know, the steppers... Mm-hmm. So you're putting shoulder screws into the stepper um, and some, you know, some spring washers to put some tension on them, right? Um, I did not put any spring washers in here. 
Um, no, no, no. I'm saying if, that if, if on the motor mounts, right, when you mount the uh, – because right now you're not. There's no – it's not a shoulder screw holding the uh... – hey, Levi? Levi. Did you do this only when I'm home? He doesn't love it when you're not. Huh? He, he was doing it for you, too. Just yeah. – he just meowed at you. No. Oh. Hey. Get. Yeah. Is it, I think they're out of food. I'm not going to feed them right now. Huh? I'm not going to feed him right now. You're going to wait till he's a good boy? I'm not going to do it immediately after you've done that. Yeah. Uh, good. Do not reinforce the behavior. Well, you do oh, realize okay. that you're going to get punished for being gone, right? What's that? So you do realize that he's going to punish you for being gone, right? Oh, I mean, he's already sat in my sat in my. Uh, I I didn't even get the the bag opened, and he he decided to claim it, so he was sitting on it. So I couldn't even unpack my suitcase. <laughs> Ninety-four new messages. In the custom tools chat. Yeah, I kind of skim those. I don't really. So H two B likes the likes the Hamera mount, and with the fan, it's only ninety millimeters wide, which is not bad at all, considering you got one hundred and forty millimeters to work with. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, but he says it. It's. Yeah, you don't. You, yeah, you don't. Um, I think he pointed out that you don't zero it with. Um, with the tool installed. Yeah, the they were saying earlier you don't want to like home it. Hey. Oh, hey. Hey, hey guys. How's it going? So, no, I I wouldn't want to. You home it with the carriage and then. With only the carriage, and then you, all your tool offsets are based on that home. We picked up all the, or my fiance picked up all the the uh, panels tonight. Oh yeah, so, how'd they come out? I'll have, uh, the ones I've seen so far look great. I have to go through all of them, um, probably of tomorrow. All right. But she's got D and D. I don't know if I'll be able to ship them before Monday or not, but we'll That's see. Fine. Oh darn! No, no, don't. don't uh, I need you to sh ship them by midnight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> All right. Yeah, don't I'll, interrupt. I'll, I'll drive it. Those are those are so <laughs> hard. I don't know about you guys, but you know, when I had a regular game, you didn't miss it. Otherwise, your character that something bad happened to your character. Well, so, uh, and this is funny. This is going to be on the YouTube thing, but um, so tomorrow is hopefully. Uh, the pinnacle of this adventure nice. and hopefully we do not die and there appears to be at least one dragon involved only well uh is it an actual dragon or is it um a wyvern it, it is in fact an actual dragon it is a blue dragon <clears throat> so are your characters named characters yes uh so what level are they running seven seventh level yep against a dragon uh huh. How many? Uh, about six of us. Yeah, you're toast. We're hoping that we can uh, do something. Um, th there's a, a a plot twist that we're hoping to pull off. Oh, all right. Well, good luck on that. So I've all already right. I already consider a success. Um, we rode dragon whelps up to a floating castle. Like badasses out of heavy metal. Oh, geez. Corbin. Yeah, my fiance just called me a dork. Well, okay. And? You think she didn't know about this? Yeah. If she's playing D&D &D too, I hate to break it to her, but uh, she's no, no, not the only one. No, no, she's going to be in class. Oh. So she's technically a bigger dork. No, 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 no. Classes are awesome. What kind of class? Um, she's 
working on her uh, master's degree in uh, social work. All right. A lot That's of a- effort for for a, a, a little pay. I, you know, <laughs> and a critical job. A critical, oh yeah, absolutely have the highest respect. For, for social workers. The stuff that she does, that she already deals with, if somebody asked me to deal with it, I'd be like, nah, fuck you. Uh, uh yeah. Anyway. Um, um Stevie, and hey, demonetized. Sorry. I, I was not monetized anyway. But, um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get Buku bucks out of, like, you know, my 14 views that I'll probably get for the lifetime of this video. (laughs) (laughs) Um, Anyway, have you started your build yet? Not yet. The the thing that is holding me off is actually, and I think I told you guys this, uh, I found the most fantastic deal on a a granite surface plate last week. Yeah. So, you got an by 24 yeah, you MSC guys are and, just gonna make me depressed. <laughs> so MSC Industrial, which in my case they literally have a, a one of their locations in our town. Yeah. So would- I was able to just go drive up to the dock and be like, "Yeah, I know you're used to semis. Put it in the back of my Toyota." <laughs> <laughs> and it's and, not like you could pick it up yourself. Well, it's eighteen by yeah. Two. So it's not that big. It's 198 pounds. Oh, yeah. I keep forgetting. Surface plates are about three inches thick. Yeah. So it, that part of it was really bad. Um, I watched the guy about bust a, a blood vessel in his, his throat trying to pick it up. Yeah, it, that's not a one-person yeah, lift. Couldn't pick it up. Um, but it has been in the back of my uh, SUV since Monday. And there's no sign of when I'm going to be able to get it out soon. So is launch. it a rear wheel drive? It um yeah. Well, that's good. I mean, what if you're up in the northwest or northeast, and you've got snow and ice? That's good. Leave yeah. it there until spring. No, no, but that is what I need to start my assembly. Oh well. Anyway, I, um, before you go with any more anecdotes, I just wanted to say. Uh, you should probably spend some time cleaning the bearings because uh, I don't know if yeah. you've seen any of the last couple of videos that I made, but I haven't um, seen yours, but I'm familiar with Alex's Alex right. Dennis's stuff. Right. So I basically yeah. followed his video. Um, Brian led me to it, and uh, basically, yeah. I I pulled out a lot of shavings out of the bearings. Um, yeah. And now I'm tearing everything apart so I can get to the rails. So oh. yeah, that's the rails I had already mounted. Because I went to go mount or start on the... Shoot. I went to start on the so, Z-axis and um, like just one of the bearings were just terrible. So I started cleaning grimy. them. And... No, I, I mean, it. the movement was really quite terrible. Ugh. Um... Well, the other thing I'm waiting for is I ordered the uh, aluminum crossbar. Yeah, I just did that. I'm too. getting ready to do that too. In fact, where's he got that list? Where's the uh, Rose Mandela Rose works? Yep. Yeah, I, I ordered one today or yesterday. Or, I don't know. Very, very recently. Does he, have, he doesn't have a Jubilee part page. No, he does not. All right. Where's you the... just follow the link that... Uh... Yeah, but i got to find the link. But there it is. No, he's got a, he's got a Jubilee parts page. Jubilee aluminum crossbar, 80 bucks. Well, this isn't good. And I already have the uh, now the limit switch. 
What's the difference in the limit switch? Oh, uh, yeah, that annoyed me. I, I guess basically the other one's not going to fit because it wasn't made oh, the out right. Because there's a problem with the design. Yeah, so basically he added a chamfer, and the chamfer, I think, adds a spot where it may contact kind of irregularly. Right, and is there... I I haven't finished... Uh, I've caught up with the... Caught up with all the all the Discord yet. And he's getting ready to do the uh, a little bit the motor mounts and whatnot as well. Yeah. One of the things that I, I mentioned to, to Josh when he started doing the aluminum motor mounts is he cut the thickness on them. So instead of the motor mounts with the you know he, he didn't do all the machining operations with the motor mounts um, to match the the three D printed part with okay. the, the counter bores and whatnot. And it's like, Josh, why did you take the counterbores out? That kind of thing. Because, oh. you know, a counterbore, so he made it thinner. So the, 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 you end up having to put standoffs into the motor mounts. So your pulleys are sitting on standoffs. Or on oh, that's not good. Because you like a three, you got to add some like three millimeter spacers to them or something. Um, and you know they're they're M4. They fit inside the shoulder bolts, right? Yeah. But you've got a spacer sitting on spacers. <laughs> um, sorry, has to do it. It's a requirement. Um. So there's a spacer sitting on top of the plate that the pulley then sits on. Um. Uh, and you're still using the offset blocks for the two different sides, right? Right. Because you know one's thicker than the one side is thicker than the other with that offset block. Um, but the motor plates are identical, but they're just mirrored, right? Um, okay. And but because they're thinner than the plastic plate, so the plastic plates are nine millimeters thick. And he used six millimeter thick for the for the aluminum. What I was gonna say, why wouldn't you just mill it, have it milled from a thicker piece? Start with a ten millimeter, ten millimeter. Yeah, piece. start with a ten mil piece and then work it down. Yeah, and use your counter because well, you got to cut slots and stuff like that. But milling it, you know, once you've got a, if you've got it, you're using end mills, you're using end mills, right? Right. And you you can do all the counter bores and you can do the the taps and things like that. And that's, I mean, tapping directly into these things is, is easy because it's even at 6061 aluminum. You can yeah. tap that all day long. Yeah, yeah. Um, don't take that wrong. I was talking about actually cutting threads. Um, yes, this just, I have a lap. There you go. Uh, so yeah, that that that's something, especially when the crossbar is nine millimeter thick, right? Right. So, so why are we not is why are we not just matching the aluminum or the plastic parts in aluminum? Yeah. Now, I can see making adjustments. So wherever the inserts are, you remove the part, the cutouts for the inserts, right? Right. And in place of that, where the inserts are, you spot the hole and you just cut you just drill out the um the the tap and you undersize it, right? Yeah. You're running the tap size. So a if I remember correctly, two point nine millimeter is the drill size for an M three tap. Yeah. Yeah, I I'm not sure. I'll talk to him, see what he says. Well maybe get um, him on the mic. My guess is that he had a bunch of Mike 6 hanging around. <laughs> he had some scrap. Right, because he, he made his... I think he made his bed and some other stuff for the first one. So my guess is he probably had some Mike 6 hanging around or AT, just generally TP and made it from what he had. 
Yeah. Also figuring that if people are buying Mike 6 for other stuff, they can do the same. I suppose. Naturally, I uh, stripped the uh, hex head on this one in oh. carbon fiber. But I was able to use my Dremel to uh, cut a slot in it for a flathead. So here's a here's a quick trick that might work. Oh, I got it use. now. Just for future reference. Okay. Um, if you strip your hex nut or the the cap and strip the 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 head on a on a hex nut or a hex screw, grab a um, get a torx nut a uh, torx driver, and you can usually drive drive an appropriate size torx driver into it enough to get the head, get it out and then you toss the screw. I already had yeah that would probably work. I already had my drum I mean, out though, so it wasn't that, that big of a yeah, deal. Yeah, I mean if you've already got it, so actually it worked really well. I just really carefully held the grinding disc and it was a perfect width for a flathead my big flathead. It it does. Downside is so, now there's some dust metal dust on my crossbar, not that it matters anymore. Yeah. So is that the electric screwdriver that everybody is talking about? No. Not exactly. Go ahead, tell them about it. Well, I mean, this was what Brian pointed out to me. It really should be his honor, but essentially it's the same thing. Uh, but okay. instead of having to spend a uh, hundred or what is it, about a hundred bucks for that special one? Yeah, they're the ones yeah. that I... Yeah, this is uh, thirty nine ninety nine, and I'm pretty sure it works exactly the same way. Well, it's Dang. got buttons instead of... Okay, so it doesn't have an, L, an, an OLED display, and it doesn't auto-drive in the direction that you rotate it. You have to push a button. Oh, I didn't see the, I, that part of it, but... I was going to say, I don't know if I can do that. Buttons are complicated, man. They are. So I got a ship notice today from uh, Duet. So I got I got not a, a ship notification that uh, they shipped my Duet three and four four board for a four tool tool board pack. Cool. I'm uh, I'm really curious about the tool boards. Um, at some point, I may spend the money on it. Uh, at least once he publishes the the files for it, start taking a look at it. Um, because my thought is, is you could probably run Clipper and use them with Clipper. You probably could. I mean, it's got a Cortex M M zero on it. Yeah, and, and it's got a twenty two oh nine. So and it's got a bunch of inputs. Yeah. So my my thought is is then that becomes the you know the buy a you know SKR one dot four and and those. But then again it still would be more expensive than the two SKR pros that I have. So Yeah, if you're gonna run two SKR pros, that's gonna give you twelve. Yeah. But that that gives you twelve twelve stepper motors. Um, and I got the GTR with its expansion already coming. Um, uh, the, yeah. the order up there. So, I mean, I'm going to be swapping stuff around. I'm also building a bigger one, too. Once I get the first one. Yeah. That's that's kind of like like my plans. You know, I've got the the crazy extruder design stuff. So uh -huh. basically, the J Jubilee is going to get as assembled. It's going to get at least one normal tool and a flex drive tool on it. And then I'm going to start on the crazy plan. And uh, I figure that should take me about the next six months to a year. Yeah. Yeah, people were like, I, Daniel was talking about the CAN bus. It's like, yeah, but the thing is, with the tool boards and the CAN bus, you're sending all your moves ahead of time. And the CAN bus has a clock pulse on it to keep everybody synced. Yeah. I mean, CAN bus has been around for a long time. 
I've looked at the a little bit at the protocol, at least early versions of the protocol that uh, Duet was using for that stuff. Uh-huh. Um, one of the things that they did that's kind of smart is so CAN bus uh, byte ordering is a little bit weird for messages. Yeah. And what they did was um, the commands, uh, so basically commands that are uh, like lower bit level commands have okay. priority over things with more significant bits, right? Yep. So command zero has a higher priority than command one. Well, they use the lowest level commands for basically shutting down uh, temperatures from the sensors and like heartbeat signals. Yep. So that even if your if your CAN bus is really really chatty for some reason, uh, you should be getting the most important things. And then all the boards are designed to shut down if they stop reporting temperature. Right. So and that makes a really good sense. Yeah, every I think it's every three seconds, um, the system will shut down if it doesn't hear temperatures. So, yeah, I'm trying to decide. Do I, you know, and was that that was in machine hardware, wasn't it? That Mandela was talking about it. Which which part? Uh, about the new uh, cutting the new bit. Whoops. Uh, all right. I don't know. What's wrong? Uh, I'm just trying to get some timelines. Although I've got I've got two more other machines I need to finish getting the finished. new plates and the new you're talking about the corner plates and yeah. Stuff. Ooh, Daniel Daniel went ahead and did it. He printed a new carriage block and added a. And he, it looks like he got the the BL touch to mount. So why did people want to go with the BL touch over what we were using? I missed that part. Um. Because he kept crashing the the limit switch. So one of the things apparently he's made. All right, I want to see what he's talking about. So this is from this afternoon. Um, and with the all metal one, is the he, Josh is wants to name it the Metallurgies. Hmm. Jubilee V1, Jubilee V2, Jubilee Inspired, Modulies, Budgies. <laughs> and metallurgies. Um, so Daniel posted, made some progress with the BL Touch, and it's having all kinds of benefits I did not anticipate. Example, Z-Align tool to tool. The BL Touch makes it easy to touch the plate that the nozzles are going to later touch and get absolute correct, absolutely correct offsets between the plate, the print surface, and each nozzle working on the script right now. Also, yeah, I've crashed I saw it that. Already. Yeah, I've crashed it already. And the way I mounted it in the carriage, it pops itself out of the way. Less than a second to snap it back into place. No damage. And he's got to post the FTLs. I thought the Plus, VL touch there, would have been... With the probe retracted, would have been completely out of the way anyway. No. Well, he's. I think he's crashing it. Uh, yeah, I think he actually crashed the head into the, the like side of the full on just drove it into the plate. Yeah. But I like the picture. I like the color he's using for one thing. So yeah, it slips in there. My question, my concern is that if it can pop out. What's the repeatability? But I guess as long as it's thing, as long as it's initially secured, um, I thought he likes this though. 
if we implement this properly, each tool will have the offset from Z0. And then the probe slightly redefined the physical Z0 in relation to the bed. We'll never even know because everything is Z0. Oh yeah. Now I was I was watching one of Thomas Salander's old videos on his sensor that sensor video he did mm -hmm. with the duction versus capacitance versus contact. Yeah. It's pretty. Ugh. I'm I'm not sure I necessarily agree with all of his his findings, but you know some of the things like the inductive is great, but it doesn't really work well on glass, <laughs> right? Right. So you're, you're, you're offsetting to the glass, not the bed itself. And that's one of the reasons why I like the contacts or the BL touch. Yeah. Or I like my well, BL. And there's also the heat issue with, with inductive. And In then with, um, capacity. the other one is with eight. With AC beds, that becomes a problem. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I'm, yeah, having a having a physical contactor, and I like the way the BL touches, even though it does have some variance. But if you come at it nice yeah. and slow, if you do your second probe within the within the response time of the of the of the BL touch, you're going to get within yeah. a micro. And you're I have get ability within a microscope. On my existing printer, I have a piezo sensor, uh -huh. and it goes it goes on the nozzle. So it's basically got a little white foam pad with a hole in it, and that goes on the nozzle, and it goes around and touches. Works great. Um, is a little bit faster than a BL touch because it doesn't have to stow and unstow the the tip between moves, right? Yeah. So I can just go down through and tap, 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 tap. The problem with it is any little plastic, and A, you can only do it while the nozzle is, is cold. Yep. The bed can be hot, but the nozzle has to be cold. Yep. Um, and even if you do it with the, the bed hot, I would worry about um, it causing weird signals, especially with like an AC, since you're putting this little piezo sensor essentially, and it's ending up against the bed, like, the majority of the time. So I have a oh, couple questions about whether that's going to have issues. Have but, you seen how Perfect Piso mount, mounts their, be, their sensor at the top where the filament comes in? No. So it's mounted, it actually mounts on the top of the, of the heat exchange, or of the heat sink. And you're running, okay. around, the tap, the, you're running around tapping the bed. And yeah, yeah. Oh, that's just like the people who use the um, the accelerometers, right? Yeah. Some of the, the deltas will use an accelerometer uh, that they basically hang the hot end off of. Yeah. And so they can detect the deflection when the accelerometer, you know, when the, the nozzle hits the bed. Okay. Um, so I've, I've seen a couple that do that. But the problem with the, the piezo on mine is you get that little bit of plastic that builds up on the nozzle when you're using like PETG, or et cetera. And yep. since you can't have the, the hot end hot, it literally is a little plastic bead that adds offset. Yep. And it changes between every print. Yeah. So what I found is a lot of times I'll have to run it you know, run through, let it mesh level, and then adjust it, whatever it, it came back with, right? Go in and adjust it. And after that, it's pretty much dead set. And the only time I need to change it is when I mess with the nozzle or uh, I mess with the bed or something, you know? But right. other than that, I, I level mine once a month, possibly. Okay. And I've got it set to sample a hundred points. 
What? Yeah. Um, what size bed? A, a nice little 220 by 220. And you're doing interpolation between those points. Uh, you're doing a 10 by 10. What's yeah, your, are 10 you doing by 10. A two by two, are you doing a 2 by 2 interpolation? Yeah. So you're actually, you're, you're measuring 100 points. You're measuring a 10 by 10, but you're interpolating uh, two more between each one of those points in the grid. Yep. So it's a it's a thirty by thirty. Yep. So you're building a mesh on nine hundred points. Come on, Levi. Come on. No, not up there, dude. It, seriously. It, it can do it. <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, of course it can do it. It's just math, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's just math. It's just more well, math. Well, actually. What's funny is, is some, uh, like, if you try that on, like, a ramps board, ain't going to happen. Oh, the ramps. it doesn't have enough memory. Yeah, the ramps board is going to freaking die. Um, but I'm doing it in Clipper, so, you know, I've got plenty of memory in the pie. Right. Your laundry. If you... Theoretically. Okay. Theoretically. Do I really? I, yeah, okay. I have... I... Every dryer. I have no. It's, it probably means that the the thing is clogged. It's every dryer. Yeah. Okay. okay. Very useful probe, well designed and thought out. So yeah, I'm kind of interested in seeing how uh, seeing getting some FTLs from Vanel and trying it out because, yeah. and honestly, I. For the BL touch, for the price difference between an original and, you know, it's like, yeah, it's a half price difference, but the folks who designed it ought to get paid for it. Oh, yeah. I've, I always buy the BL touch. The, I've been getting like the Creality the kit, so, because I've got Creality machines, and mostly what I want out of the yeah. Creality kit is, yes, the official, the original BL touch. And this yeah, is, yeah. This is, but also the uh, the metal bracket, that that steel bracket for the touch. Yep. Because you want to go buy those by themselves, and they're fifteen bucks. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Pretty boy. Sorry, I've been I've been traveling all week, so you know I'm being mostly ignored. <laughs> <laughs> Cat. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So. He says the STLs are going to be out later this week. So we'll see what happens once, uh, you know. Um, I'm curious to see what the tool boards look like. I'll probably get a pie. I, I'll probably get a pie four to throw on there just so I have a bit more oomph. Yeah. And, um, probably get the four gig one. Although I don't know if we need to go on to the full four gig but so when i when i set up my uh the back plate for mine um i did five sets of panels that are the just stock from you know josh right right and then i did a custom one for my skr okay and of course that one alone cost me almost a hundred dollars oh geez because it was low like he had to pull a whole panel of, of uh, I did it in black, it. and he's like, he, he's he was like, I have to pull a whole panel, so he's like, sorry. All if right. he's gonna charge you for a whole panel, did you get the extra? No, <laughs> no, I would have. His his panels, I wouldn't know what to do with it. Um, to give you an idea, the the laser that he cut our stuff on. All yeah. five sets of panels laid out on one pass. Yeah. It was, I'm just saying, if well, he's going to charge you for a panel, then you should. I think they're the four panel. by eight sheets or something like that. Yeah, they were four by eight sheets. The the reason I didn't pull it from him is I've I've kind of worked out a deal with him to do more stuff in the future. So yeah, he's you've got the he's already got the stock set aside for you. Yeah, he he um. 
depending on how things go and whether I think it's going to be the demand will be there, I may bring a bunch of panels to Murph. So I still think we should, I still think uh, DIN rails should be a thing. Yeah, I just should be, it I, should be a serious discussion point because I, of the variations. I didn't have time to discuss and figure out before we got it cut. So I said, you know what, I'm going to go with, I'm, I, I literally, um, I planned my panel based on the idea that I will probably screw it up, right? So I can, I've got the SKRs uh, both horizontally and vertically uh, oriented. So I can just switch it to whichever works best. And okay. then I left the pie off of it completely. Yeah. Easy enough. I, I figured for for a a V one shot, you know, that that should be good enough. So when you did the, the bearings, did you soak them in uh W D forty or what did you uh yeah, I, did, I followed Alex's video or okay. used Napsos and WD forties and uh the tri flow and then followed use, up use by Napa? A lube. Well lighter fluid. Oh okay. What he was calling it at least. Well yeah, I just don't do it in the house. So or have it well related. <laughs> well ventilated. Well ventilated, no sparks. Yeah, I wouldn't do any of that stuff in the house because I use gas heat. You, you take all the adventure out of this stuff. No, I've I've put out I've put out too many fires. Thank you. So, um, I've talked with Josh about the idea. You know how we have the 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 eight millimeter ball and then the pins that everything sits on. Right. Yeah. So Cerakoted? I'm going to Cerakote them. I'm going to send some out and get them Cerakoted and probably send him a set. Okay. What is it going to cost per ball, you think? I don't know yet. That's the part where it's going to – I'm preparing for it to hurt. I'm guessing the place that I was talking to, the smallest stuff they do is 20 or $30. So – I'm guessing yeah. I'm going to be between 30 to 60 bucks per ball. Well, no, for them to do a set of parts, I don't know how many they'll do. So I'm going to talk to them. They're used to doing like, you know, Glocks and <laughs> somebody okay. approaching them and being like, Hey, can you, you know, Saracote some, some balls and some pins. I'm sure they're going to be like, what the, the hard part that's going to be really tricky with it is you want an even coating on all the surfaces, right? Uh, yeah. And the quest, the other thing is, is, you know, you're going to have to oversize the, oversize the mount for the yep. pin, right? A little bit. Yep. So what's the, what's the layer thickness on when you Cerakote? I should, it's pretty I thin. I'll go look. I think it was, I mean, it's measured. <laughs> Oh, let me see. It depends on which one. Yeah. What I'm looking at is their... Oh, what do they call it? Cerakote.com. Is that, that's not who you're doing it to. Is it doing no, it no, no, no. It's the Elite Series. It's finding an app. It's finding somebody who can do it. Right. They'll sell you all the stuff to do it yourself, but good luck with that. Uh, yeah. Okay. One mil is the typical thickness. Got it. One millimeter or one micron? Mil one mil, so okay, point yeah. zero. Yeah, point zero zero one inch. Yep. Sorry, I work with metric way too much. <laughs> um, all right, so we got a place up here called Threatworks. Um, here in Newport News, right off of Langley. Okay. 
Um, it's T H R E A T W E R X dot com. What is it again? Threat Works. So I have a question for you. R E A T. Yes. My Y axis bearings they actually slide around pretty good. Um, yeah. Yeah, way better than the. Uh, so ba- they they have the other bearing on them though. The. Uh, uh, okay. Think, you know what? Remember, like they're they're longer than the other bearings. Um, I think they. The might have... the larger block. Right. Those blocks seem to be one of them especially is like like butter and the other one's not too far behind it and I'm kind of hesitant to want to rip it apart to be honest. I mean if I don't know what what would you do? That could be a thing. Um so this is uh Cerakote applications threat work. Uh so these guys can do Cerakoting. Yeah. Disassembly, sandblasted, degrease, spraying, and baked. What uh, what do you think you would do? Would you tear it apart or would you leave it be? Oh, for Cerakoting? No, I'm talking about no, the wire. No, he's talking about his bearings. Oh. Um. They seem to be much cleaner, or at least much smoother than the... Uh, Ones with the small bearings in them. I mean, you're you're already you are cleaning them, right? I haven't or is torn it... them apart yet. I only tore apart the uh, one for the x-axis. Oh, okay. I was debating whether or not I wanted to. If the Ys are in good shape, and you've already got them parallel. I'd almost, and they're and they're sliding okay. I would have left them alone. I'd leave them alone. If, unless you think that there's, unless you're concerned about it. Hey, Decker, what's up, bud? The only thing that concerns me is the amount of debris that came out of the small blocks when I did it. You know what I okay. mean? Okay. Yeah. But but these runs, but those ones, none of them were as smooth as. Even the least smooth of the Y rails, like the, like I feel uh, like the Y rails might have had a better, better process, or something. Okay. Or is that crazy thinking? That's not completely unreasonable. All right, so I'm just gonna clean up this bearing real quick, and then uh. So I just posted in the group chat where I'm probably going to go. Yeah, hold on. What do you mean where you're going to go? From me. Huh? They're like right down the road from me. Oh, okay. But if you want to be, if you want to be impressed, look at there's a video of their ASTM. D4060 testing, which is your like abrasion resistance testing, and it's it's crazy. What is it that you're watching? They they have tests for like abrasion resistance for like any kind of coating. And when you test ASTM, this it's called ASTM D forty six uh, forty sixty. Yeah, is the test number. Um, Cerakote lasts more than twice as long as the nearest competitor, and ten times longer than traditional like bluing or other approaches. I didn't think bluing was really a. Uh... Protective they're talk. They're looking at most mostly for corrosion resistance, right? But what's impressive is is the stuff has like a 
about an HR uh, an HRC above sixty. The stuff that oh. I was seeing was like HRC, I think eighty. Okay, is that that's not a Rockwell hardness, is it? Uh, let me check. I think that is. I think it's Rockwell. Yeah. So I just uh, that's the, that's the place right just on the other side of the tunnel for me. Okay. Hey. Oh, and the other thing that, that that's really neat about Cerakote beyond like the hardness and the you know those aspects of it, yeah, it's actually it has a friction coefficient lower than Teflon. Really? Yeah. Interesting. Because when I when I mentioned to Josh, his original concern was he's like, well, you know, when we tested the the like coated. Uh, ball and pin, you know, they tested coated pins and, and what they came away with was is that it just wore the other part more, right? Well, yeah. The ball was, and it was also uh, a rougher texture. Right. And so he was like, well, if you coat it with this, is it just going to be more abrasive against the other part? And I was like, well, nope. Actually, both of them should be more like Teflon and even harder than what they are now. So, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I what I'd almost want to do is, um, you know, if this is if this were an engineering stand or something like that, is you make up a tool, you make up a tool changer assembly. Yeah, and that you don't even necessarily have to get a full on. Um, uh, all you do is you just put it on a on a single single y axis and you line them up and you just basically have it do a pick up pick up release pick up release pick up release pick up release and do it ten thousand times right yeah. um, and then you just inspect it at that point because all you're really looking at is that is you know you're not once they're once they're engaged and locked you shouldn't be seeing any additional wear at that point. And yeah. in, in the runtime on it. So just enough. I'm sure there, I guess there probably, there will be some because you've got, yeah, it's a mechanical joint, right? Hey, Brian. Uh, yeah. Check out, uh, probably after the lag, of course, but check out the video. You can after the see. lag. Yeah, after the lag. You'll see, uh, little pan that have captured the stuff oh in. yeah oh that's what you got out of it that that's four bearings so those are the four uh smaller bearings okay i hadn't emptied it out since i cleaned the other ones yeah you got a bunch of stuff in there yeah that's why i'm half uh, i'm torn about wanting to clean the other ones because yeah well, the the other my my other thought on that is is a what are you going to hurt, right? Yeah, and, you're going to have to put in the new. At at worst, you know, if you do it, if you had to do it later, think of what you would have to go through to do it later. Yeah. Well, you've already got the belts all off, right? And you're gonna, you already ordered an aluminum crossbar, right? True. So you're going to have to realign realign the carriages and the crossbar. So I may well, as well do it. Yeah, the rails I plan on not. I'm not going to unbolt the rails. I'm just going to. Yeah, leave the rails alone. Don't don't move the rails. Right. You dropped your phone on the cat. I dropped my phone on the cat. Poor cat. Okay. All right, but um, I think I'm going to call it there. Um, You're welcome. Right. Yeah, I don't really. By know. the way, if hmm? if either of you have the interest in that uh, that that uh, surface plate for if if you get that one from MSC for two hundred and fifty dollars, it includes the stand and the stone. 
Yeah. Is that the tool room? Yeah. Or, yeah. Okay. So that's not the lab. No, it's it's a it's a grade B. So I didn't okay. go crazy. But for a grade B, most places I looked at, the stone was at least, you know, the the plate itself was at least three hundred. 